Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. This is me, Dr. Jangir, and you are watching me on my YouTube channel. That is Dr. Jangir Khan. Today, we will talk about common ABGs. So, this patient uh, presented with the drowsiness. The patient is a smoker having 40 uh, pay care history of smoking. So, from this ABGs, what is your diagnosis? So, the first thing is you look to the pH. Now, before going into the detail, please do watch my channel uh, regarding the ABGs. So, I have uh, explained all the uh, acid-base disorder. That is 22 minutes video along with compensation formulas, MCQs, uh, mixed acid-base disorder. And there is another video that is given, uh, the link is given in the description below. How would you proceed in the metabolic acidosis? Well, sorry uh, for the uh, quality of uh, recording. If the, the recording is not of good quality, agar iski quality kharaab, I'm sorry for that uh, because the, the camera stability was not good initially. So, jo metabolic acidosis pe jo meri video hai, to usme thodi wo garbal ho sakti hai. To is isme aap pehle dekh le pH ko. So the pH is acidotic. The first thing, the pH is acidotic. Next thing is you look at the CO2. So you look at both pH and CO2. If the pH and CO2 are both in the same direction, if they both are increasing or if they both are decreasing, then the problem is metabolic. The problem is metabolic. If they are moving, the pH and the CO2 is moving in opposite direction, then the problem is respiratory. Now coming toward diagnosis of this ABGs. Now if you see the pH, pH is decreased. You look at the CO2 that is increased. So the problem is respiratory. The problem is respiratory. Without looking into the bicarbonate, you can see, you can diagnose this patient. pH down, CO2 upward. So the problem is respiratory. And the pH is down, CO2 is, this is called respiratory acidosis. This is called respiratory acidosis. Now this is acute respiratory acidosis or this is chronic respiratory acidosis the answer is chronic respiratory acidosis chronic why chronic because if you look at the bicarb the bicarb is increased in acute respiratory acidosis the bicarb is normal that is 22 to 28 within the limit if that is more than 28 it means this is chronic so the problem is chronic so it is type 2 respiratory failure and this is chronic now the next thing it is compensated or not the answer is partially compensated. The answer is partially compensated. Now, what is the cause of uh, the CO2 detention in this case? If you see the bicarb is up, this is chronic type 2 respiratory failure. But the pH was supposed to be normal because in chronic type 2 failure, we know that the pH is normal because of the compensation provided that the patient has stable COPD. So over here, the type 2 failure cause, number 1 is the COPD, number 2 is the main problem that the patient comes to your ER, you give oxygen, the person become unconscious. The second problem is you can see over here, oxygen. You are giving more oxygen. And now, you can see over here, the can you appreciate this saturation? Do you think you need 98% saturation in a case of type 2 respiratory failure? The answer is definitely no. We need 88 to 92 percent. Now, what are the target saturation in type 2 failure? The answer is 88 to 92. In type 1 failure, target saturation is 92 to 95. And in pregnancy, that is 95 to 97. Oxygen is a drug. If you are giving more drug, there is more side effects. It produces reactive oxygen species. It can cause uh, uh, destruction. And it, it, can, it can cause problems. So controlled oxygen. So the cause here is the COPD. The second cause is the high oxygen. So you decrease oxygen and repeat ABGs after two hours. And look at the pH and the CO2. Because there is a hypoxic drive, there is a term that is called hypoxic drive. The COPD patient, their respiratory center is driven by hypoxic, hypoxemia the low oxygen 
you know there is the oxygen the respiratory center is stimulated and they breathe and they wash out the co2 now when you give high oxygen the this hypoxic drive that is removed and the person retain co2 the person retain co2 the person retain co2 so this was a simple case of abgs most of the time in the er in the opd uh, in the ward we give high oxygen now the second most common problem is when you nebulize with oxygen the copd patient are those patient who are at a risk of co2 retention when you nebulize with oxygen they would definitely go into type 2 failure so my request is do not nebulize with oxygen source nebulize with nebulizer machine and keep the target 88 to 92% in copd patient in obstructive airway disease in those patient who are having stroke who are unconscious and who are these are the the patient who are at increased risk of co2 retention who are having uh, uh, obesity hypoventilation syndrome who are having restrictive lung disease who are having ascites who are having abdominal distension due to any cause who are having muscle weakness who are having chest deformities who are having uh, uh, neuromuscular disorders who are having brain occupying lesions these they they are running on hypoxic drive when you give more oxygen they will retain more co2 and that will lead to co2 narcosis thanks for watching please do subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notification of my video